Today, I'm going to show you how to use the vanishing point filter in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. In today's episode, we're using kind of a special filter. It's called the Vanishing Point Filter, and you may have never heard of it, but it actually does something really cool. The Vanishing Point Filter will allow you to place any object, such as like a photo or a painting, onto basically any surface in Photoshop using the correct perspective. It's a pretty simple tool to use, and the results are amazing. Here are our images for today. We got a really cool, just kind of abstract landscape painting, and then we have a picture of a living room. So if you guys uh, maybe wanted a piece, buy a piece of art and <laughs> figure out what it was gonna look like in your house before you bought it or something like that, this would be a cool way to do that. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this piece of art and um, just grab my move tool. So V for the move tool. I'm gonna hit shift and click and drag from one image to another one. And you can see right now, this is huge. It's way too big. So let's go ahead and full screen that, F to full screen. And I'm gonna hit Command or Control T. That's gonna bring up my transform dialog, and then we're gonna lock our width and our height together, and we're just gonna scale this down. We want it to be about the size that it's actually gonna wind up being in the end version of our image. It can be a little bit larger. Now we need to decide where we actually wanna put this. Um, I think right over here would look pretty cool. I'm gonna put it like basically right above the fireplace and try to get it about the same size. So let's zoom in and kind of get an idea of what we're talking about when we say like, we wanna put the, uh, this painting here in perspective. Well, perspective basically is how you perceive the world. So we're just gonna grab a couple, we're gonna make a couple lines here. Let's make that painting invisible. All right, so you can see like this line down here that makes the floor um, and the line that up here that makes the ceiling, these eventually, if they were to just keep on going back into infinity, would wind up converging. These, these lines, and I, so not the straightest lines in the world, but eventually these lines would wind up touching each other. The same thing with like, you know, this line and this line and this line and this line. All these lines at one point in time are going to converge on what's called the horizon. And that's what creates perspective. We know that this line here, let's just get rid of all those there. All right, this line up here and this line down there, technically they're parallel in real life, right? There's, they're not actually angling down and up. Um, but the way we're looking at the world makes it look like that's happening. So what's kind of difficult about placing like a, a painting or an object onto a wall is you have to follow those perspective rules. So that's gonna say that like this, you know, bottom line of the fireplace, for instance, is going to be different at a completely different angle from the top line of the fireplace. So if you were to imagine, you'd have like tiny little, you know, lines all the way like this that would wind up making your perspective, just like we have here on the floor. You can see those floor tiles, the ones over here are angling this way, the ones over here are angling that way. So you should have the basic idea. We need to get this painting to look like it's on the wall in the right perspective. But before we use the vanishing point filter, we're gonna go ahead and try to get this image onto our clipboard. Let's show you how to do that. So let's zoom into this image and you know what? I'm gonna change the border on this. It's, it's white right now. I actually want that to be black so it's gonna match our fireplace. So let's use our magic wand tool, W for magic wand tool. I'm gonna to take off sample all layers because I only wanna sample this layer. And we're gonna make a selection right there on the border. So just clicking on the border, and here you can see we're on the same layer as our, as our painting here. I'm gonna hit shift delete, which is the keyboard shortcut for the fill dialog. And we're gonna say fill that with black. All right, now let's hit command D to deselect. So we can see now we have a black border on our image. Okay, so how do we get this onto our clipboard? Well, the clipboard's basically where any information is stored when you do something like a copy and paste on your computer. So to get this on your clipboard, just hold down the control or the command key. There we go. Let's click on the layer, which is gonna make a selection around whatever you have on that layer. Okay, so that's going to make the selection. Now we need to copy it. So command or control C is going to copy it. Now it's technically on our clipboard. So we can go ahead and deselect. We can make that invisible and we're ready to start working with our vanishing point filter. It's a good idea to make a duplicate of your background layer. That way you're not working destructively. So let's click on our background. I'm gonna hit Control or Command J to duplicate that layer. We're gonna go to filter and then down here to vanishing point. There we go. Now basically it just brings up your image, which is you know, pretty simple to use. What we do is start off using this create plane tool. And basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on four corners of a plane. So you're gonna define your own perspective. 
So in this case, it's really not that difficult. I'm just going to click on this bottom point right here, and it's going to create a blue line for me. We're going to click up there. We're going to click right up here and right down here again. And it's going to kind of complete these for me. Now, you're going to want to kind of move these around a little bit after you've created them. If the bounding box around is red, that means you're not really creating what they would, you know, what Photoshop considers like a, a good plane or whatever it is. You can move this in or out. And the goal here is to make sure that each of these lines actually follows the perspective of the image. And you should get a pretty good idea. Like this instance right there, that top line, that should be pretty much lining up with the top line of the fireplace. So if it doesn't, what we need to do is take some of our corners here and just move them around. There we go. And that's looking a lot better. Now, in my perspective, in my experience, this just takes a while to kind of get used to it. Because it's not, it's not super easy to just like pick the exact right point your first go round. So if you got to mess with it for a while, that's totally OK. All right. Now, if you need a change, like let's say we, we need a couple more spots here, like more little grid lines to see what I'm doing. There we go. Let's change our grid size. I'm going to have this be a 10. There we go. Now I can really see what I'm doing just to make sure that all the grid lines actually do line up. There we go. And that we are going to be creating the correct perspective. And we can go ahead and stretch this out just to make sure. So these lines should be pretty much in line with what's going on with the bottom of the fireplace and the top of the fireplace. So you can see, basically, we're creating a wall. And if it were to go back into, you know, back into infinity, it should pretty much follow the rest of the wall in the image. All right, so that looks pretty good with the fireplace there. So we've created our actual plane, and now we're ready to paste what's on our clipboard into the image. So here within the Vanishing Point filter, what we're going to do is just hit Control or Command V, and that's going to paste the painting, and it's going to just stick it in the top left corner. So we're going to use our marquee tool here and basically just click and drag it over to our vanishing point uh, selection. And it's going to completely transform it into perspective for us, which is just really, really cool. Now, we can actually transform it a little bit more from there if we wanted to fit a little bit better into the scene. So I'm going to hit T for the transform. And then we're just going to stretch this. I'm going to stretch it up just a little bit. The height doesn't really matter so much. I'm just going to see if I can get it. But you can see if I bring it to the top of the fireplace, it should line up very well to the top of the fireplace. And if, even if I brought it down to the floor, it'll line up the floor as well. So this is, if you plan on putting something in perspective, this is pretty much the only tool you should be using because it is the best one. Let's just grab this point here. All right, there we go. And bring it back up here. All right, one small adjustment and we should be good to go. All right, there we go. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And what it's going to do is it's going to actually apply it directly onto the layer that we chose, the background copy. So it's really important to actually have a copy of your background. Now, if you're having a little bit of trouble using the vanishing point filter, I found sometimes if you're trying to use the filter towards either the right side or the left side of the image, it helps to crop the image out a little bit like I've done here. So you can hit C for the crop tool and just kind of drag out to give your vanishing point filter a little bit more space. And then when you're done, just bring it back in and you're good to go. All right, that looks awesome. So you guys can see just how simple it is to actually place an image in perspective into an existing photograph. We use the vanishing point tool to make a selection around our wall. We define each of the four corners and then move them around a little bit to make sure we're in the right perspective. And then we pasted our painting on from our clipboard to get it into perspective and placed it on the image. Let's take a look at the before and the after. Here's our before, no painting, and there's the after with it perfectly in place, in perspective, and it looks like a photo. That's it for today's episode, guys. When choosing an image for this filter, make sure you can actually see some lines in your image. That way you can get an idea of perspective and it'll help you build that grid a little bit better. If you're in love with Photoshop and photography like I am, be sure to hit that subscribe button on your screen. We release free Photoshop and photography tutorials every single week. And if you have an idea for a new tutorial or a question or comment about today's tutorial, just leave it in a comment right down below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, guys. We'll learn you later. Bye, everyone. Man, even the bloopers are bloopers. And if you did it correctly, it should pretty much... Oh, it's not working. Ah, just do it. Just do what you're supposed to do. Gosh, you suck. 
champion. That took some getting through. <laughs> but I did it.